Hey everyone, it's Mr. Brown. Today we're going to be making some dice in Inventor. So we're going to be doing some 3D modeling, some CAD, some computer-aided design, using a program called Autodesk Inventor. If you are on one of the classroom computers, you have Inventor installed. You should have Inventor installed. It says Autodesk Inventor Professional. It either says 2022 or 2020, whatever year it says. They all work the same way. Uh, if you are on a student laptop, there are the other directions to get onto the Windows Virtual Machine to do Autodesk Inventor. So first off, let's open up Inventor, and I'm going to go through the whole process start to finish about making some dice. So let's go ahead and open up Inventor, take a look at what it's doing here. Very first time you open it, it's probably going to take a minute to load. So I'm going to pause real quick and come back when it's loaded. All right, so it's loading slowly but surely. You see it's loading down here in the bottom left corner. Inventor is a very large program, so it's going to take a few seconds to do it, especially the first time as it loads all the things that it needs to onto your computer or onto the virtual machine, whatever we're doing here. All right, so let's take a look here. I'm going to connect here. All right, so the screen right here, this is kind of your home screen. If you open it for the very first time, very first time you might have a box that pops up that says, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to learn or start making or something? I don't remember exactly what it says. Just say, start working. And then we're going to come back here to Inventor. So there are four main types of files that you can work with in Inventor. One is called a part, and that's just like, you know, like a little thing, a little part, you know, whatever you're modeling. That's what we're going to be doing most often. That's where you're actually 3D modeling a part. An assembly is where you take multiple parts and you put them together. So like you might make some gears and then assemble them together to see how they work. A drawing will get you a nice pretty technical drawing of whatever you're making. And then a presentation is kind of a fancy way to make it all look. We probably won't be doing much with presentations, but that option is there. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a new part. And it's very tempting to come over here and just click part. And while that does work, it is not the best practice because we might be making our part in millimeters. We might be making it in inches. If we just click part right here, we don't know exactly what it's going to do. It's probably going to default to inches. But what I want you to get in the habit of doing is instead of just clicking part right there, go ahead and click on new and this little box will pop up. Under here, under templates, you've got a little arrow. Click that one down. So if we're working with the imperial system, if we're working in inches, we're going to use this English one right here. And we have standard inches, standard inches, parts, assemblies, drawings, presentation. If we're working with the metric system, millimeters, we're going to click on metric. You see there's a bunch of different options part in standard millimeters ipt dot ipt is a part file assembly file drawing file and you see there's a lot of things here so ansi uh, din um, jis so these are industry standards ansi is american national standards institute i don't remember din is the german standard jis i think is the japanese standard gb is the great Britain, British standard, I think. Anyway, a bunch of industry standards. This is an Autodesk product. Autodesk makes stuff for the real world. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that new button, drop down, and go to metric. We're going to make a standard millimeter dot IPT part file. So we're going to be doing this in millimeters. Our first one's going to be millimeters, so that way we don't have to deal with fractions and any of that nonsense that comes with inches. So we're going to click on that and go ahead and hit create. And this is going to open a new file. It's going to open a new part file. All the settings are going to be set to millimeters, so that's good. So while that loads, let's take a look at our dice. 
before you model something, it's good just to kind of know what you're going to model. Um, so we're going to just quickly pause on Inventor real quick, and we're going to look at our dice to see what we're actually making here. So looking at our dice, we want to know what we're going to be making. So we can measure this. What we're going to do is I'm just going to pick one of these dice and I'm going to just quickly sketch out the size of this. Now this is a cube. You could measure it with a ruler pretty easily. So you can do that and measure it. Um, and you get pretty good results. But this is a three-dimensional object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the calipers. Now we may or may not have gotten to calipers yet, but calipers are good for measuring three-dimensional objects. So the way it works is I can grab stuff between these two jaws and read where that scale lines up. It will tell me the answer. I can use these two outer jaws. So if I had uh, doo -doo -doo, like if I wanted to measure inside of that, I can go like that and that will give me the answer. There's also this part on the bottom where you can measure the depth of something. So I can go through like that and that will give me the answer. So I'm going to use these calipers. I'm going to first just make a quick little sketch of this cube right here. This dice. So I'm going to zoom in so we can take a look here. Now when we're reading calipers, you're making sure that this is closed all the way. You're making sure that your object is not in this little cutout right here. Because when I close this all the way, there's a little gap right there. And then what I'm looking at is where this zero line lines up on my scale. Now we're just going to round to the nearest millimeter. So let's just kind of tweak it a little bit right there. So where this zero line lines up on our scale, in millimeters on the bottom here. So we got 0, 5, 10, 15, 16 millimeters. So just gonna go ahead and draw this real quick. Just gonna make a quick sketch. Nothing pretty, just it's beautiful. Right, I got a square. That's all I care about right now. Let's start with side number one, because side number one is side number one. All right, so I measured that from here to here is 16 millimeters. So I know if that's 16 millimeters, I know we're making a cube, so I know that this is also 16. And then I know my depth is also 16, because it's a cube. Now I'm putting a 1. I'm putting it right in the middle right here. Now if that's 16, I know that this very center point from here to the edge is going to be 8. So I'm just going to note that real quick. From the edge to my center is 8 millimeters because that's halfway. And let's just get the size of that little dot. They call that little dot a pip. I don't know why. So I can get my calipers and kind of get close. Or I can get this part and try and get close. But anyway, what I've got is about... So that focus comes back. Focus is gone. Oh. So that pip is 0, 1, 2, 3 millimeters. So the diameter is 3 millimeters of that circle. So let's get going here. Let's, let's start off drawing this cube. So we got a 16 by 16 by 16 cube. So let's get back here in Inventor. Alright, so when I'm looking at Inventor, I've got a bunch of buttons up here at the top. Um, it looks really confusing at first. I even have even more buttons if I start clicking through here up at the top. I'll open my toolbar right here. 
most of it, 99% of it, we're not even going to touch. You don't even need it. This does a lot of things that is going to be way beyond the course of you know this class and next class and high school even. But let's get going here and let's start drawing. Most of the buttons you're going to use are just right here at the top and the left. The way Inventor works most of the time is you're going to go from left to right on the toolbar. The way you're going to model things is you're going to start in two dimensions and then you're going to bring it into three dimensions. So always start in two dimensions, then bring it into three dimensions. So let's get going here. <laughs> 